Last week, this little Ryzen Pro APU landed here without any warning and we put out this build video last week and we asked if you guys wanted to see how this little thing performed. Because the response was pretty overwhelming, I figured that I'd test it out in a few ways to see what the story was with the Ryzen 5 Pro 5650G. I wanted to test the 5650G out in the same way that we usually test APUs, but I wanted to add some testing around what it would be like if you decided to pair the 5650G with a discrete GPU as well. I also wanted to know how the 5650G compares to the 5600G and the 5600X and how it compares to the 5600G in relation to integrated graphics performance without a discrete GPU. On top of that, I wanted to know if there was a performance loss with the Radeon 6600 that uses a PCIe Gen 4x8 interface, whereas the 5650G uses only PCIe 3.0. So let's take a really strange trip where we take a look at both Windows and Linux performance for everything that I just mentioned. There's so much data to unpack with this video and there's chapters in all of our videos like this. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, Use your little pointing device in your hand and hover over that progress bar or check out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say here because again, there's so much data to unpack. Now this is all of the out of the box stuff only. We're not covering overclocking thermals or power consumption in this video, mainly because the 5650G is a locked CPU, so you can't overclock it even if you wanted to. Also keep in mind that we're only showing the results from the hardware we either have here right now or have previously tested. We can't show results for things that we physically don't have or have never owned. So yeah, that's quite impossible. We built a single test bench up with the ASRock X570 S Riptide. It's the same board that we tested both the 5600X and 5600G on. We tested this in both Windows and Linux because that's just something that we do around here. We also used the same RAM combo that we used for the 5600G and 5600X as well. And for cooling, we went with Wraith Prisms basically because they're faster to install and remove when we're switching out CPUs and there'll be no deviation in thermal performance because of the cooler. We also assigned four gigs of RAM to both APUs for testing. So strap yourself in. This is gonna get weird, so let's get unpacked. Let's start off with Cinebench performance. We tested with Cinebench R23 only, and we used some of the historical data that we have with Cinebench R23 that we've collected with testing all of our CPUs again when R23 came out. From our testing in Cinebench R23 in both multi-core and single core performance, it's pretty clear that both the 5650G and the 5600G are definitely not the fastest chips on the market, but I guess you already knew that if you're watching this video. However, the 5650G is faster than the 5600G. I'm not quite sure why though, considering that on paper, the 5600G and the 5650G are the same, but I'm gonna put this one down to silicon quality. This result though is not something that we're gonna see consistently with the 5650G. How about a test that most people overlook when they're testing new CPUs? A timed Linux kernel compiled test. Now this test was run with an older Linux kernel as the majority of the CPUs that we've already tested have been tested with compiling this version of the kernel. All right, on to APU performance in our gaming and 3D benchmarks. We made a few adjustments to our regular testing to account for the lower power and for the VRAM assignment limitations. We also tested everything, again, as I already mentioned, with four gigs of VRAM, just to make everything even with both APUs. We ran three different benchmarks that all used the GPU and CPU in different ways to see what the performance looks like in both Windows and Linux in different situations. First up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider and the 5600G beats the 5650G out with 50 frames per second. Next up is 720p medium, and once again, we're seeing the 5600G beat out the 5650G with 41 frames per second. At 1080p low, we're seeing that the 5600G in both Windows and Linux is getting 30 frames per second. This is pretty typical with this benchmark. Next up is Unigen Superposition at 720p low. We're seeing the 5600G come out on top in Windows with 61 frames per second. If we switch over to 720p medium, we're seeing that the 5600G in Windows at 35 frames per second is beating out the 5650G 
once again. If we take a look at 1080p low, we're seeing that the 5600G again is coming out on top at 41 frames per second. Next up is Basemark GPU. We're seeing the 5600G in Linux is topping out with performance here. This is very unusual for Basemark. If we take a look at 720p medium, once again, the 5600G is coming out on top at 299 FPS. Don't be fooled by Basemark's high scores because it doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Last up is 720p with everything maxed out and the 5600G comes out on top at 51 frames per second. Okay, so we know how the 5650G compares to the 5600G in terms of that integrated GPU performance, but how does it compare to the 5600X and the 5600G with a discrete GPU in both Windows and Linux? Let's find out. First up, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the 3080 Ti Founders and the 5600X. You can see that it comes out on top in Linux, and this is typically what we see with this benchmark and Linux. Again, at 1440p in Linux, the 5600X takes the crown and beats out both the 5600G and the 5650G. Last up, we're seeing at 4K, the 5600X in both Windows and Linux is getting 109 frames per second, only beating out the other two CPUs by one frame. Next up, we've got Superposition, and this is such an odd result, and we tested this multiple times, and we kept seeing the 9181 FPS across everything. Next up is 1440p Custom with Depth of Field and Motion Blur disabled, and the 5600X in Windows comes out on top. This is pretty typical of these tests. Next up, 4K Optimized, and we're seeing the 5600G and 5600X at 4K with the 3080 Ti, getting the exact same result. Last up, Basemark GPU at 1080p high. We're seeing the 5600X in Windows coming out right on top. This is how a DGPU typically performs with Basemark. Then we're seeing the 5600G beat out the 5600X by two frames. This is a bit of an anomaly. Last up at 4K high, as expected, the 5600X comes out on top with 207 FPS. There are a few surprises there, but there's one question I've been asking myself. Is there gonna be a performance difference with the fact that both the 5600G and the 5650G both support only PCIe 3.0? Not only that, but are GPUs like the 6600 XT or the 6600 that have a PCIe Gen 4x8 interface gonna lose performance when running at only PCIe 3.0x8? Let's take a look. First up with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p high with the 6600, the 5600X beats out the 5650G. Next up with 1440p high, we're seeing the same thing here with that 5600X beating out the 5650G. The difference in performance with PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 isn't actually as big as I thought it would be, although with other GPUs that we've seen, we've also seen that the performance gap hasn't been that extreme. We're and seeing this again with Unigen Superposition as well, with we're actually getting the same scores in Windows with PCIe Gen 3 and PCIe Gen 4. And the difference here as well isn't as big as I would expect to be at 1440p custom, given that this is highly CPU bound at that resolution with those settings. And if we go complete GPU bound with 4K in superposition, you can see both are hitting 41 frames per second. Next up with Basemark GPU, this is to be expected. The faster cores of the 5600X actually make the result a bit higher. Also, that's to do with PCIe Gen 4. We're seeing this result again with the 5600X. This is kind of how Vulkan works as well with its throughput. And lastly, no surprises here at 4K in base mark. We're seeing that, you know, with the 6600, the 5600X is out on top. Obviously, all of this testing isn't telling the whole story. It's impossible to talk about every single thing related to any CPU, but the information here I think you might find useful if you're on the look for a CPU that has integrated graphics while you either wait for a GPU at a decent price or you want something that's relatively low power. And I covered this in the 5600G video as well. 
The real difference between these two chips is less about the performance though, because each chip has its strengths and weaknesses, such as enhanced security features, real-time memory encryption, fully compliant on-chip TPM, just to name a few things. These may or may not be important to you, but I just thought I'd mention it considering it does have those features. The only main issue I see with the 5650G is the off-the-shelf availability because I can't find anywhere that actually stocks these. And that's the thing though, these Ryzen Pro CPUs are fun to play around with and they're fun to test, but ultimately, from what I can tell, they're made of unobtainium. You just can't find them anywhere. They don't exist. The conclusions that I had with the 5600G that I'll link in the description, you can watch that video whenever you want, just watch it after this. I can also say these things about the 5650G. If you could actually buy one, if we actually knew the price, which at the time of filming this and testing this, you can't buy it and we don't know the actual price. That's basically all I've got to say about it. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. Now this is a, a, a pretty interesting APU, much like the 5600G. I do like that these APUs exist. The major problem I have with the 5650G is you just can't buy it. It doesn't exist. Thanks for watching.